What is going on, everyone? Tim from Tier Fun Orbital, Space Junk Sabers, once again. Uh, so, this is going to be a rundown video on an install that I recently completed. I actually completed this one uh, this weekend. Uh, as of recording this video, I finished it this morning. Um, so, this is for a custom Space Junk Sabers speeder. Uh, it is Technically called, uh, I think, speeder number 49. I believe Nevin numbers his speeders, so it doesn't have like a particular name. This is speeder number 49. Super, super cool hilt. It's got a Canon Y switch assembly, mount switch assembly on it, and I did set this up with a removable chassis. The client for this particular install wanted a CFX, and I am happy to report <laughs> that this is the first CFX install that I've done in a while where it wasn't completely painful and annoying for the whole install. I It's become a thing now. I just do not. <laughs> I don't like the CFX, the Crystal Focus board. I don't like it. Um, if I had to choose, I prefer Profi. That's probably because I've just done more Profi installs. Um, and at this point, I can I can probably do a profi with my eyes closed. Uh, like I know where all the pads are and everything. The pads are very, very keenly placed. Uh, they're big enough to solder to without using a microscope. Uh, they aren't danger close to the motherboard or the chip, uh, the processor chip on the board like CFX is. I just, um, CFX, the Crystal Focus board is a great board. It really is. It's a powerful board. It's a premium board. Um, I just am not a fan. Um, and, and again, that's probably because I just haven't done that many of them. Um, but I just, it's become a thing with me. Like I just, not a CFX guy. I don't like them. I think Profi is, it's open source Profi as well. So, so yeah, it, I don't want it to sound like I'm hating on Crystal Focus. Crystal Focus CFX boards are great. They're, they're fantastic boards. I just, um, it's probably, like I said, it's probably because I just don't do that many of them. Uh, every time I usually do one, there's some kind of issue. Um, so, but with this one, everything was, was pretty seamless, right? Uh, it was a really, really seamless install, right? There was plenty of room on the inside of the grip for this particular build as well. So I was able to fit Grableys on the chassis. Uh, the CFX board is a little bit wider of a footprint. So designing a chassis around them is a little bit more challenging at times uh, than doing Profi, right? So let's come into Fusion and talk about the chassis and then we'll do a quick demo. Okay. So here is the chassis that I designed for this particular install. I have got, I went completely nuts with Grableys on <laughs> This one, uh, I've got some tubing along the side as well. On the other side, I didn't go as crazy because I needed room for a wire channel uh, down this side. I had a bunch of leads uh, coming down the uh, side, uh, out, out of the bottom and up the side to get up to the board. I've got an OLED down here, so that's four leads. I've got my negative... Uh, battery lead, and I also have my uh, speaker, my two speaker leads. So I needed a lot to come up that wire channel. So just some simple uh, kidney, uh, kidney shaped grills here, uh, just to make it a little bit more unique than I like. I just really just don't like having any bare areas on a chassis. I think that looks uh, looks a little silly to me. Uh, so I like having uh, any kind of groove or channel. It also, doing that, it, when you uh, rub and buff a chassis, it, it makes it look a lot more uh, unique and dynamic. So I try to put some kind of channel or groove on every single square millimeter of the chassis, okay? Up top, God, you're probably getting dizzy with my camera work here. Up top, let's get rid of this grill. So up top, up top. Uh, down at the bottom, we've got an OLED. This is, uh, I believe I put a blue OLED in here. This is underneath the chassis, uh, and my leads uh, come out the bottom. So I, I, I wire up the OLED, essentially, and then slide it in this channel. Okay. 28 millimeter speaker down here. This is from Smuggler's Outpost. CFX does sit in this uh, tray. It will slide up underneath this lip as well to help it to secure. Around bottom, we've got a kill switch here. Battery tray is here. I <laughs> So another thing that I'm starting to do, right? So up until this point uh, with, with battery tabs and me, uh, I, I'm a complete Neanderthal. I just use 
you know, generic uh, battery tabs and glue them in place. Uh, I feel it's probably about time to start getting a little bit more refined <laughs> for my battery tabs. Okay, so uh, up top here is a square positive battery tab. It sits in this indentation. At the bottom here, I'm still using the spring battery tabs, but I've just kind of created uh, a, a holder for them just to make it look a little bit more <laughs> professional instead of just, I mean, there's nothing wrong with gluing your battery tabs in, but I just kind of, <laughs> I think it's time for me to start start doing something a little bit more, more clean looking, right? And that's it. Up top, we've got, <laughs> you know, again, there's nothing wrong with gluing your battery tabs in place. I just want people to know that. I just, um, you know, I'm just trying to like refine some of my, some of my uh, processes, okay? Up top, we've got a six rail PCB. This is from Stardust Sabers. And that's it, right? I do have Space Junk Sabers embossed on the side. I do put uh, Tierfon Orbital and Arabesh as well. I try to put that on all of my chassis if there's room. Okay, and that's it, right? So let's come up top and talk about this hill. So here it is. This is the speeder number 49. Uh, this is, you know, again, I say this all the time. I can look at a hilt and tell when it comes from Space Junk Sabers, uh, much like I can look at a hilt and tell when it comes from, you know, uh, Starfall or one of the other uh, unique one-off Sabersmiths out there, right? So Nevin does put his own aesthetic on these grips and these hilts. Uh, and this is no different, right? Some really, really unique touches. I do have, I do love the Canon Y switch assembly. This is a Canon Y mount. Uh, I have wired this up. There are two tactile buttons underneath this clamp car that serve as your main and your aux. And just some really, really nice, nice touches around the pommel. We've got some heat staining. There is a D-ring. So one of the, you know, one of the things I really love about builds like this is just the amount of found objects that are put on, on the, the hilt. This is like a steel bike clamp almost, uh, that has been heat stained, uh, you know, up top. I know that this is from a Graflex, uh, battery holder or, or battery tube. Just a really, really nice, unique hilt. Okay. Blade plug was also provided, uh, by Space Junk. So... This is a removable setup, right? So to get at your chassis, well, let's talk about the inside of this hilt first, right? So there's the six rail PCB pin side, okay? You don't need to take the grip off to put the chassis in. In fact, you, you can't. So to put the chassis in, the pommel does unscrew, okay? So you unscrew your pommel, take that chassis. So here is the chassis for this build. I did do a pass of Pewter, rub and buff, there's that OLED. We've got our CFX board here. Plenty of room to get the SD card out. If you do, to the client, if you do need to get it, your USB. The CFX does slide out of this tray. Uh, I will say, just try to be a little uh, delicate when you're sliding this CFX board out. Um, it is, it's press fit in there, but just, you know, just be delicate with it if you need to pull it out. Here is the battery tray, kill switch up top, and there's our 28 millimeter speaker. So to use the chassis, take your battery, flat part of your battery is the negative side. <laughs> I have a little trouble getting through that. Uh, negative side towards the, uh, the speaker, essentially. Then hit your kill switch. There's that OLED. So this has been set up with the most recent uh, firmware release of CFX that has uh, twist, twist to activate, twist to deactivate. So I set that up on that first font there. And that's it, okay? So, once you get your battery in, you wanna slide your chassis in the bottom of the hilt till it stops, take your pommel, screw that pommel in, and you're ready to go, okay? So there is that lit PCB. Let's come down to the bottom. Man, this thing sounds great. Let's see what else we put on here. Sound bank selection. Nightfall, second sister. Outstanding. So. This, this hilt. See, I, I didn't set up all of the uh, font configs with that twist to activate. This hilt is loud. I mean, really loud.
Sound bank selection. So on the Canon Y switch assembly, the bottom tactile is your main, top is your aux. Man, this thing's loud. Sounds great. So let's put a blade in it. So this is a one inch blade holder. Take that blade plug out. There's a set screw uh, right in this groove here. It looks like an M4 or M M4 set screw. Uh, take your blade, rest it on those PCB pins, and then tighten that set screw. And you're ready to go. Man, this sounds great. And you're ready to go. So I've written the in the config, this is for a shorter blade. It's actually in my, my personal hilt back here. Uh, but that can be edited in the config as, as you, the client, see fit. Let's see what else we've got in here. Sound bank selection. Night four, second sister. Outstanding. So I just set this up with my like stock CFX config. Not all of the blades or not all of the fonts Sound bank have been have been I'm having a hard time talking today. Uh, not all of the fonts have been set up with Twist to activate. You're in fire. And some of the timings for the swings need to be changed. Um, yeah. Great hilt sounds really good. Yeah, it's one of the things that I, I, that confounds me about CFX as well, right? You've got to go in and you've got to change the timings for your swings for each font. Why you wouldn't want the swings to instantly start uh, registering when you activate a blade, I don't understand that. I never understood that. Like, so for example, uh, this, so it was set correctly on that one. So for it, let's let's try another one. Sound bank selection. You're in fire. Second sister. I think this one. How predictable. So see that delay in registering swings? I don't understand that. Like why would you just not have all your or maybe that's maybe that's due to the font font smiths I, I don't know but i never understood that i never understood why you had to go back into your fonts and say you know i want to hear swings as soon as i activate my blade never never understood that so that is the speeder variant number 49 from space junk sabers uh great great hilt it sounds great it sounds fantastic it's, loud. it's really loud <laughs> Fantastic hill, and I, I, you know, I say time and time again, I love Canon Y switch assemblies. I, I, I love wiring them up. I think it's, you know, it makes a hilt look super, super unique, right? So, that's all I got. To the client, thank you very much for your patience and trusting me with your install. If anyone has any questions about this particular install or the chassis or anything really, uh, please do not be a stranger. And with that being said, may the force be with you always. Have a good one, everybody.